Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel Vocavita English and today's theme is poetry. Poetry is a style of writing that uses a formal organization and that is often divided into lines or stanzas or it refers to something beautiful. It is a type of literature or artistic writing that attempts to stir a reader's imagination or emotions. The poet does this by carefully choosing and arranging language for its meaning, sound and rhythm. That is all about the meaning of poetry. Poetry includes rhyme scheme, meter and word sound. That means A, B, A, C rhyme scheme, meter that can be I'm meter, troches, spondes, anapest, ductless, and another thing is word sounds. Word sounds means alliteration, assonance or consonance. These are the figures of speech or poetic devices that is used. Now we are going to do in detail all about these. Let's first understand the elements of poetry. Elements of poetry are eight. That depends upon the lines used in a poet. It's very simple and easy to understand. The first element of poetry is couplet. You can see the example by Shakespeare to except from his sonnets. The next example is a tercet. Tercet means consisting of three lines. Generally, the rhyme scheme is AAA or ABA. Next element of poetry is a quatrain. Quatrain by the name is consisting of four lines. A very famous example of a quatrain poem is Humpty Dumpty. Next example is Sinquain. Sinquain consists of five lines and you can see the example on the screen. Next example is a sestet. Sestet consists of six lines and the example is on the screen. You can have a look how these six lines form the poem known as sestet kind of poem or sestet element. Next form or next element of poetry is septet. Septet is a seven-line poem and the last is octave that is eight-line poem. Let's very quickly have a look at all the forms of poetry that we have discussed and all that we have missed. If it's a one-line poem, you'll call it monostish. Monostish. Two-line poem is known as couplet. Mostly Shakespeare used it. Three line poems known as tercet. Four line poems known as quatrain. Five lines poem known as quintain. Six line poems are known as sestet. Seven line poems known as septet. Eight line poems are known as octave. Nine line poems known as Nonet or Spencerian because it was mostly used, widely used by Spencer, Edward Spencer. And 10 lines known as Dizane. Dizane. So let's talk about now the main 10 types of poetry. First is free verse. Not to be mixed up with blank verse, free verse is poetic form or technique where the poet does not follow the conventions of any meter or rhyme. Second main type is haiku. This is the only poem that rivals free verse these days. People love the haiku. It is a three line poem generally where first and last lines have five syllables and the middle has seven syllables. Third main kind of poetry is sonnet. There are various forms of sonnet but the most popular tends to be the English or Shakespearean sonnet. If you observe the poetry of Shakespeare, he has mostly used sonnets and he is the one who has introduced it well in the poetry. It's a 14-line poem written in iambic pentameter. The poem will end in a rhyming couplet. There are much more to these, of course, but this is the general definition. There is also the Italian or Petrarchan sonnet. The English sonnet seems to be the most attempted. Next main kind is blank verse. This is basically a poem written in iambic pentameter, but it does not rhyme. It can follow other meter, but iambic pentameter is the most common by far. 
Next main kind of poetry is limerick. A limerick is at its core and there is more to them. A five line poem that follows a strict meter and always have a AABBA rhyme scheme. Next main kind of poetry is tanka. Related in a sense to the haiku, the tanka poem is basically a poem that has five, seven, five, seven, seven for its lines. So it's basically a haiku with two seven syllables lines added on to the end. Seven main kind of poetry is synquin. At its very base, this is simply a five line poem. So the tanka above falls into its classification. But the most popular synquin that people want you to write when you say, let's write a synquin, is generally in English that follows a rhyme scheme of A B A B B, A B A A B, or A B C C B. Next main kind of poetry is sestina. It's probably easier to write a sestina than it is to explain how to write one. So it's a six stanza of six lines each with a triplet at the end. Each stanza has the same six words at the end of each line of the poem. So basically, the words that end the lines to the first stanza are rotated over and over again at the end of the lines of the next stanza. You can see in the example. Ninth main kind of poetry is Vilnil. Vilnil. Here is another poetic, but it's not easy to explain nor easy to write. The most famous one of these is Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night by Darren Thomas. The form is basically a 19 line poem that has five three line stanzas. The first line of the poem and the last line of the first stanza becomes a refrain that is repeated again and again until the last stanza. Basically, line 1, 3 becoming beginning and ending lines of all the other stanzas. And last but not the least, acrostic type of poetry that is very simple to write and many of the English learners might already know what I am talking about. This is a simple poetry form newer than the rest on this page. The acrostic is basically a poem that uses the up and down letters of a poem to spell a word or a phrase. So, the first letter of each line could be pulled out to spell a word. So, these were the main kinds of poetry. Now, let's see why do we need write to poet. Why do we need to write poetry? What are the benefits for us to write poetry? Yes, take one example of the road not taken. You have a look at the poem. Now very quickly, we are going to read the poem and going to understand what vocabulary and what words we are learning into this. Two roads diverged in a yellow wind. And sorry, I could not travel both. And be one traveller, long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could. Then took the other, as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that the passing there, had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, in leaves, no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere, ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood. And I? I took the one less travelled by. And that has made all the difference. Now let's understand what does the poet Robert Frost means when he has written this poem. Let's understand the meaning, the vocabulary we have learnt, a little bit of the insight in the poetic devices. 
so the vocabulary we have learned from the poem is diverged that means went in different directions or separated undergrowth that means shrubs bushes and low trees better claim that means preferable wanted where had not been crushed or worn out and the human feet has not been used and worn so frequently trodden that means walked on sigh that means regret equally lay means lying in the same manner sigh that's deep breath of sorrow so so many words have added to our vocabulary but just reading a poem you see now when we are doing a poem that's a compulsion to do a poetic devices now let's go through the poetic devices that we are going to learn from this poem very quickly firstly the whole poem is metaphorical guess when the poet says two roads diverge in the wood he means two choices in our life and we cannot take both we have to choose any one and in the whole poem this metaphor was dominating poetic device besides metaphor poet has used personification yes personification is giving a non human object a life like characteristics so he has given personification denotation that means whatever dictionary says a word means according to the dictionary is denotation and connotation is what a word can make you think of so a road is a long narrow stretch with a smooth or paved surface made for traveling by motor vehicle or carriage this is what a picture comes to our mind but it can make you think of a path way decision of course so that is a connotation another poetic device used is because it was grassy and wanted where wanted where is an alliteration the consonant sound in the first words of the w you can see repeated wanted where that is alliteration yes now let's talk about the moral of the poem the theme of the poem since we have taken a very famous poem and do you know that this is among the top 10 poems robert frost poem the road not taken seems to hold out the moral that life is a continuous journey full of divergence every now and then the important thing is to move on without looking back whether the choice of paths taken was right or wrong the right or the wrong are relative terms we cannot get everything in life and have to make choices whatever direction a life whatever direction our life takes us is determined by the choice made by us make a wise choice and be firm on keeping on moving without being in a dilemmatic condition be confident in your choices that was the theme and now is the quiz time i'm going to ask you three questions related to poetry so far what we have done first question is what is one word used for study of poetry study of rhymes and rhythms this one word and that is prosody yes prosody is a word used for the study of poetry second question is what is a poem with one line called we have done the elements of poetry in which the all elements were divided according to the lines in a poem yes remember couplet sestet tretet septet so many so which one word is used for a poem with one line the word is monostich monostich
And third question is, what is the difference between a poem and a poetry? This is a common confusion between many students, teachers, parents, many of you. What is the main difference between poem and poetry is? Poetry is a process of creating a literary piece. It's just a process, while poem is the outcome that is the end result of this process. Now is the time for practice. Take 15 minutes to write a poem. It can be about anything you'd like. It can rhyme or not rhyme, follow a pattern or not. Unleash your inner Shakespeare, Walt Whitman and Emily Dickinson. When you are done, share your poem in the comments below. Yes, and this practice is essential because you know that writing a poem not only deepens your understanding of language, but it also teaches you how to learn, how to break the rules how to write better prose, improve cognitive function, it helps you heal emotional pain, express love and affection more deeply and it leads us to greater self-awareness. Yes, so I hope this video was relevant for you. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe for the next video as more informative videos will be coming up every Wednesday and Saturday for you. Till then, happy learning.